hosting this workshop that would be handled by Dr. Gelani. Before I start the workshop, I would want to give us the general rules and regulation in respect to this workshop. If you have any questions or inquiries on the topic discussed today, please kindly send in the chat box. If you are not speaking, please kindly mute your microphone so that the speaker speech will not be interrupted. And if you have any challenges, you can log out and re-log in again. I would allow you back in because once in a while we might have difficulties in our internet and it will disrupt us. So thank you very much once again. My name is Zainab. I would be hosting this section. Before I officially hand over, I would like to tell you more about the person that would be coordinating this workshop today is in person of Dr. Ravid, can you put, mute your speaker, please? Dr. Ray, can you mute your speaker? Dr. Ray, Ray, Dr. Ray, please, can you mute your speaker? Okay, thank you very much. Sorry for the interruption. I would like to introduce the speaker of today's workshop in person of Dr. Said Ahmed Gailani. He's a graduate of University of Technology, Malaysia. He holds a PhD degree in corporate finance. He graduated with a Distinction Merit Award. He is currently serving as an assistant professor in Labar Business School in Faslamabad, Pakistan. He has vast teaching knowledge in research. He has coordinated and been members of various editorial board. He has been in the field of accounting and finance for over 14 years. He has published a lot of international and local journals. He is a reviewer of many reputable journals, such as Sustainability, Foresight Journal, Journal of Applied Economics, and Reader's Insight. He is a founding member of Connecting Asia and the head of International Grants and Scholarship for APRA. He is an expert in qualitative analysis and a professional instructor train, a strata trainer as well. So before we start the workshop, I would like to play a brief video on what um, Dr. Gailani is all about. Thank you very much. Excited to have you here about all the amazing conversation that we're gonna have today. I'm highly delighted to introduce our speaker, Dr. Ahmed Dilani, who is graduated from University Technology Malaysia. He has more than 14 years of teaching experience. Apart from teaching, he is an avid researcher in the field of accounting and finance. He is also a founding member of Connecting Asia. He has research expertise in the field of quantitative data analysis and he is a STATA trainer as well. So let's welcome Dr. Ahmed Gilani. Thank you very much. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Gilani to please take the floor. Thank you very much, Doctor. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zainab, uh, for uh, such a nice uh, and very brief introduction about me. I'm very grateful to you. And uh, I'm also grateful to you, uh, all of your Connecting Team, uh, Connecting Asia team, uh, who invited me uh, as a 
like trainer for this uh, today workshop okay dear participants assalamu alaikum and hello to everyone uh, hope you are fine in your home country in this pandemic situation okay uh, before further delay uh, we are going to start our session about uh, complex survey analysis using stata so uh, okay i'm just sharing my slides uh, Okay. Yeah, uh, Dr. Zanib? Yes, the can slide you, can is you watch? Yes. Okay, 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 thank you. Okay, this is visible. Okay. Okay, uh, dear participants, uh, today our workshop topic is, as you know, uh, already you have registered in uh, this workshop that is complex survey design using Stata. Okay, I am Dr. Sayed Ahmed Gelani, and uh, this is my again short introduction. Uh, Dr. Zainab is already explained uh, it well, so I don't you know want to repeat this all these introductory uh, items okay uh, this is our today learning outcomes uh, what we will understand after this workshop so first of all we will uh, understand what is the survey techniques basic survey techniques and what are the basic types of uh, different surveys then uh, we will jump into the uh, sampling that is very important uh, for our uh, survey analysis uh, of, uh, then uh, we will understand what is the sample, uh, simple random sampling, clusters uh, sampling, certified sampling. Then we will, uh, you know, adjust the weights uh, of uh, each individual uh, unit you know, of uh, interest that is included in our sample size. Then uh, we will see that uh, finite population correction factor. How can uh, we give uh, this simple calculation in our Stata software? Then we will do a uh, different analysis uh, in our survey. Uh, it uh, would be a, you know, uh, a descriptive type of analysis. We will see uh, like uh, basic descriptive and uh, uh, then uh, orderly scale regression, logistic regression. So there are lots of, uh, you know, tools and methodology available to analysis our data under uh, survey analysis. Then we will conclude our analysis in a, a short form. So this is basically a learning outcome for today's workshop. Okay, uh, what is survey research? Survey research uh, is basically, it's a you know, collection of uh, information from individual uh, which you are going to investigate. Either you are going to investigate their aptitude, their trends, their behavior over the period of time. So this is a, a explanatory type of research, or you can see that uh, in survey analysis or survey research, basically you are going to develop a questionnaire or you can con uh, construct uh, interviews or you can uh, do a simple observation to uh, collect the data and then definitely uh, after collecting the data you have a different statistics tool to apply uh, to uh, to reach a uh, logical conclusion so this is a, a simple definition of survey uh, then okay uh, there are basically uh, two types of uh, basic two types of survey first one is cross sectional survey and second one is longitudinal survey i will explain later what is a longitudinal first we will see the what is the cross sectional survey in cross sectional survey uh, you have many uh, you know respondent at the single point of time okay you have a large population like in my example if you have uh, 500 uh, male or female uh, like uh, in population size so you want to you know uh, to check the consumer satisfaction of particular products 
right so definitely uh, you will uh, conduct a survey among 500 respondent at the same point of time right so this is a cross uh, sectional survey in this example uh, if you will notice that you have uh, 500 you know 500 uh, population so you have a different variables like uh, sex education income level resident or marital status so you can just uh, get this information by your questionnaire or interviews whatever tool is available i will explain later so there are different tools available through which you can uh, collect the data but here uh, the important thing is this the time frame is the same right so you can just uh, collect data from a large population it may be a thousand it may be at one lakh it may be at ten thousand it's up to you uh, that which level of uh, study you are going to conduct okay the second type of uh, survey is longitudinal survey in longitudinal survey uh, you are just like uh, repetitive uh, observation the same variable but you are just you know uh, the time period may be uh, different you can divide into in semi annual basis quarterly basis monthly basis so when you will observe or analysis uh, your respondent over the specific particular period of time then you can say that it is a longitudinal survey Okay, uh, in this uh, example, uh, you have the same uh, 500 respondent, you have the same variables, uh, but for the month, if you will conduct this uh, survey and collect the data for the month of January, okay, then after six months, after uh, passing some period of time, then you want to uh, want to know, uh, know the what, uh, then, uh, for example, the uh, 500 people having consuming the particular product and after consuming uh, this product you you want to know their response after six months then you you can also uh, can uh, collect data from same respondent after six months so you can you know just segregate your uh, time frame in different intervals so that is called longitudinal survey and longitudinal survey is further divided into two basic uh, uh, types. First is trend survey. Second one is cohort survey. So again, this is a very famous uh, terms uh, in survey analysis. In trend survey, what you will do, you actually you want to investigate the trend and aptitude of your respondent over the different period of time, right? Say, uh, for example, in six uh, in six months, the customer is not uh, too much satisfied about your product. Then you will improve your product. Then uh, then you will uh, test that after six months. Then after six months, so you may you know you may uh, design your research uh, survey in different time period to check the what is the behavior and what are the trend of your. Uh, client or customer or whatever your targeted population is this so this is a trend survey okay the second one is a cohort survey cohort survey mean that uh, uh, cohort mean uh, you can uh, make a uh, different specific groups within your population size uh, for example uh, if you want to investigate the effect of uh, smoking on lung cancer and uh, then definitely you will have uh, to develop two different groups. One is the smoker and second one is the non-smoker. Then you will investigate this, uh, like uh, the risk of the uh, uh, lung cancer between or among different cohort units. So in this uh, type of uh, study, basically you are, compares, uh, you are comparing between or among different uh, groups of people so this is cohort survey it depends on again uh, what nature of research you are doing or what nature of uh, research you are interesting in so these are the basic uh, four types of survey research okay uh, where survey research is used uh, definitely it's a very important question uh, uh, normally students ask then uh, where we should do a survey so it's a basically exploratory type of research or descriptive type of research. If you want to get 
the, the behavior, intent, and aptitude of different people towards any event, towards any product, towards any disease, or whatever uh, the thing, uh, it can be uh, some sort of study, right? So it's an exploratory or descriptive nature of study, and you can just simply collect the data and check uh, the behavior of people or event or situation. So in that uh, type of area, you can do a survey research. Okay, survey research examples. I have already explained that uh, if you want to investigate the job satisfaction of your like employees, then definitely you will conduct a survey. You can get information and then uh, will apply a statistical analysis to, uh, to find out a logical conclusion. Then if you want to uh, investigate either consumer decision making, then why a, a, a consumer is opting other product rather than you, uh, your products, uh, uh, this is a, you know, again, exploratory type of research, then you can uh, conduct a survey analysis or customer satisfaction, either customer is satisfied with your product or not. Again, uh, last one is uh, it's uh, use of health services, like uh, in COVID situation, what type of, uh, you know, age factor is uh, more risky in COVID situation and uh, what age of people, what uh, gender of, uh, you know, what gender, male, female, or any, any investigation, you can also do a, a survey analysis in health sciences research. So these are mainly or repeatedly a common area in research, uh, survey research uh, mechanism. Okay, service, uh, survey data tool, uh, basically uh, there are three uh, basic tools through which you can get a data from your respond, respondent or from your sample or from your population. Number one is questionnaire. Questionnaire means you can just develop your questionnaire according to your uh, like uh, investigated uh, uh, questions that you can ask from their age, their height, their weight, their, uh, their income level, uh, from where they are, uh, uh, they are uh, belongs to the, uh, which province or whatever it depends on your research objective so you can just make a questionnaire and you can collect the data second one is interviews uh, sometimes you uh, your respondent are not you know not familiar or not uh, too much uh, educated so they cannot understand what uh, what actually you are asking so you can just uh, conduct a structured or unstructured interview so it's again, it's a, you know, a second type of data collection tool. And third one is structured observation. You can simply observe uh, your respondent, how they are behaving and how they are responding. So uh, these are, are basically three tools through which you can data, uh, you can get, uh, get, collect data from your respondent. Okay. Uh, this is again a very important uh, segment of survey analysis. While you are uh, doing survey analysis, you must uh, know that what is your <laughs> what is your. Uh, 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 can you please mute your? Um, Dr. Azizat, can you please mute your mic? Okay. Thank Azizat you very much. Asfa, can you please mute your mic? Okay, Mr. Numan, uh, you are admin. Uh, can you please mute everybody? Okay. Ask Mr. Naman if he... Done, done. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, this is very important part of uh, survey analysis. Basically, uh, there are different, uh, like, uh, sampling techniques, but mostly, you know, uh, mostly people use the probability sampling rather than the non-probability sampling because probability sampling, uh, you know, uh, give uh, accurate information rather than a non-probability sampling. So I suggest you to use probability sampling if you don't have the time constraint or like financial uh, matters. So uh, I'm just focusing here the probability sampling. So basically probability sampling uh, divided further into four types. Number one, simple random sampling, then systematic sampling, cluster sampling, and stratified sampling. So it depends again, it depends uh, again that what kind of your uh, research questions. 
so you can adjust your sample uh, technique according to your research objective or research questions uh, anyhow these are four types of probability sampling here i will explain one by one simple random sampling in which uh, you you are uh, selecting your sample on uh, randomly on uh, there is no specific technique is there you can just uh, pick your sample size on random basis in this example uh, here is our population right and here you choose three sample so in uh, three sample the probability of being selected is equal this is very important in random sampling normally uh, you are suppose uh, that your selected sample is being equally you know uh, prob uh, probability uh, have probability to investigate so it's a very common technique. Uh, mostly researchers use this simple random sampling technique. Then second technique is systematic sampling. In systematic sampling, you have you will have to make a specific you know pattern. In this example, you have a you know large uh, population from one to twenty. You have set a three interval pattern. Like for example, if I just ignore one, then I select three. Right? I skip actually three here then three to four uh, again you will skip the three next three then you will pick seven then next you will skip three you will choose 11 and so on so you can uh, you know uh, you can pick your sample in a systematic way it's up to you that uh, you will fix two interval three interval or four interval uh, pattern but in this uh, technique you are uh, finalize your sample on a systematic way rather than random sele selection. Okay, next one is cluster sampling. Cluster sampling uh, technique is very famous uh, in, in which the uh, researcher divide population into multiple groups, multiple clusters, right? So in this example, say we have uh, like uh, 12, uh, 12 uh, sample size we have divided into you know four clusters and each cluster have three different units okay uh, one thing is important that uh, every cluster have a homogeneous uh, to each other across the cluster but heterogeneous in within the cluster right so uh, you you are just uh, uh, observe that in each cluster you feel like is a green uh, person it may be a different characteristics like uh, it's a uh, blue uh, blue uh, people have a different characteristic but when you are uh, dividing in the cluster that uh, must be uh, homogeneous across the cluster but heterogeneous within the cluster so uh, this is a basic uh, difference between cluster and stratified sampling i will uh, explain again later but in this technique, you have just uh, have to divide into different multiple groups. Okay, next uh, is stratified sampling. And or we, can, we can also say that stratified random sampling. In this technique, uh, stratified sampling, that uh, you divide into a smaller subgroup that having a same characteristics within within uh, within our strata right so we have two strata here one label as a green and one label is a orange color two strata and they are homogeneous within within a strata but heterogeneous across the strata so you can just divide into two basic uh, subgroups right and then you can choose our a random sampling right if you will choose uh, uh, blue strata then you can choose four and here you can observe that there is a no systematic pattern but you can go a random sampling here so this is a very important while while you are choosing sampling techniques in your survey design if you are fail to choose a appropriate sample then definitely the results will be a different uh, and they will not predict as the population over overall. So this uh, this is some example that 
one might divide a sample of the adult into subgroups like age wise this is 18 to 21 it's a one stata and 30 to 39 you can just again subgroups on the basis of age you can uh, divide into base uh, in different characteristics like in previous example if you remember i divide the the risk factor of the lungs into smoker or non-smoker strata so you can divide on the characteristics or in any age limit or qualitative or qualitative uh, characteristics you can divide it's again up to your research questions okay sampling weights and its importance uh, i'm go through very quickly because we have a time limitation i will also do a practical uh, training that how we can uh, format and analysis the survey design okay sampling weights and importance weights are definitely a weight mean that it's uh, when you are you know choosing the sample from the population the weight is very important for example if you will choose the whole population as a whole sample then uh, you can just simply reach the mean of uh, of all population by dividing by the number of the population for example if you want to see the average income of population then the, what you will do you will calculate all income of the population then divided by the number of the respondent or number of the household in the population then the mean predict the equal way to every respondent right but in when you are going to the sampling technique so you are definitely you are uh, missing some people uh, either you are using stratified sampling either you are using cluster sampling so there are uh, chances of missing or ignoring uh, ev uh, of every you know uh, every respondent so there uh, there should be a uh, allocation of weight to equal to equal respondent so this is a very important uh, point uh, when you are talking about survey sorry doctor um please um just another announcement please if you join in the meeting please mute your mic so that you don't interrupt doctor when he's making his speech please, can you mute your mic okay thank you very much doctor please you can continue yeah okay thank you very much okay uh, so this is a very important uh, like uh, when you are ignoring or when you are not able to capture all population definitely uh, it's uh, humanly not possible to capture all population that's why we are going to you know a sample uh, sample design and sample size so uh, when you are uh, in uh, when you are uh, analyze your sample size then you have to adjust the weight that must be equally you know distributed among your sample size so uh, that uh, that's why the weighted average or weight is important in estimation so it's a very simple formula here uh, weight is, is is equal to capital n divided by a small n n is a population size and uh, small n is a sample size so you can just simply uh, drive and get a estimation weight for your analysis for instance uh, you have a 100 people sample out of 10000 uh, population then you can what do you will do you will divide 10000 divided by 100 right so you can uh, get a friction that would be used in further analysis i will show you that how we can use that uh, weight estimation in our analysis then uh, second point is uh, finite population correction uh, this is again uh, important technique in our survey analysis finite population estimation uh, is again that uh, error uh, it's a you know it's a other side of your analysis it can be uh, disturb your analysis or it can be a uh, high value of uh, standard error value because you are ignoring or you are not considering uh, the imp important factor of other population area so for this adjustment you can use finite population correction uh, especially when you know your population is what uh, is your population is exactly so it is a reciprocal uh, 
calculation of your weighted average formula is very simple. Your denominator is your sample size and denominator your population size. Again, you make a simple calculation and uh, use that friction in, uh, in your analysis. So two things is important. Number one, calculation sample weight and second is finite population correction. So these are important uh, factor in our survey analysis. So uh, we are using the Stata software and these are the key feature of Stata. Uh, you can see here, I just explained that uh, it's uh, a very important uh, feature of Stata that it can manage a long and big data set, especially when you are dealing with longitudinal or panel data. So it has uh, deal uh, is it has a capacity to deal with a big data set. So normally surveys are uh, an professional uh, institute or government level. Uh, normally, uh, you know these agencies use a very big data uh, using survey. So this data has a beauty and it has a capacity to deal all these longitudinal nature data. So you can also use data by uh, doing the commands if you are comfortable with the command uh, command approach then you can enjoy the stata software as well okay uh, then you can have a uh, very good quality pictures and graphs for your publication and research presentation so stata will also help you in this regard okay dear participants uh, let's uh, do a practice session because uh, we have a very limited time Okay, I'm just going to open my Stata here. Yeah. Dr. Zainab, can you uh, see my screen? Yes, I can see your yes. screen. Yes, we can. Yes, we can see it. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, this... Uh, Okay, this is the main uh, interface of the Stata. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, uh, a, like dialog box. This is uh, a uh, information, main information dialog box. There you can see your analysis. Okay, this is a command box. You can give a command here and you can play with the data with the command. It's a very convenient method. And this dog is, you know, a, a variable name. You can just see the variable name here. And this one is again uh, what what you are doing. So all the all the history of your analysis is uh, will be showing here uh, at this area. So there are four window in Stata. One dialog box, command window, variable name, and command history here. Okay, what you will do? Uh, I will just use the already fitted data in Stata, then I will do a simple analysis, then I will also tell you that how you can import your Excel data in Stata, right? So first we will do in statistics. Okay, uh, this is again, uh, Windows, you can see there are lots of options Stata are giving to you, right? So you can just explore the data uh, because due to shorter fish time, I, I will not able to explain everything here. Okay, first, uh, what you will do, you will go in statistics. Oh, sorry, uh, first we have to, you know, import the data. Okay, what you will do, you will go in file. Okay, in file, then you will click on example data set because uh, uh, Stata has already uh, fed it uh, example or hypothetical data for you, you can just use this data for simply for practicing your analysis. Okay, you will do example data set. Every Stata version have data for you. Okay, then you will click Stata for manual data set here. Okay, if you are using Stata 15, then you will see the Stata 15 manual database here. So it depends on your what version of Stata you are using. Okay, I will click on this part, Stata manual database. So you have 
lots of data. It's a hypothetical data. Okay, so I will click uh, here, survey data reference manual. See, can you see the survey data reference manual? Okay, you will click here, make sure that you are connected with the internet because this data is extracted and downloaded from your open source. You will click here and give some time to data. Okay, uh, this window will be paired, then you will click on use, then data will take maybe five to 10 seconds to download this data. Here you can see my data is working. Yes, uh, we have downloaded this data, okay. So you can see that all variables are showing here. Right, so I can show you the detail of that variable. For this purpose, you will click on data editor. In data editor, you can see that uh, there are 58 variables and 10,351 observation is there. So this is a very nice and clean data set regarding your survey. Okay, I, like, this is a region, location, size, age, sex, race, age, height, and all these 58 variables are there. Okay, so you can just import your file as well. Okay, first you have load this data. What you will do, you will go on statistics, right? In statistics, you will come down and you can see survey data analysis. Okay, survey data analysis. First of all, you will have to settle your data as a survey design. First click on this. Because this is already settled, uh, so this window will appear. This window will say that this is a strata primary sample unit and strata is also have given a weight for you because it is a downloaded data. So Strata has already adjusted uh, for you their weights and finite population correction factor. So this is okay. And you can see that all data is set as a survey data. So you have to tell the Strata that your uh, data is panel series or survey type of data. After declaring the data, then again, you will go in statistics then you will come down again. You will click on survey data analysis. Then you have, uh, you know, lot, lots of option here. Like if you want to check the mean value of your variable, you click on mean. Then you select a variable here. For example, I want to check the mean of, uh, for example, age. Okay, then click okay. Then you have a, this type of table. Okay, so your age, mean value of your age is 42 years. And this is a linearized standard error. So it's again, you know, uh, I have already told that if you will use the more sample, uh, then your linear uh, standard error will be decreased. Or if you will use the small sample, then that factor will be enhanced that uh, I will explain further. So anyhow, just you can ignore this one. You just want to see what is the mean value of your age. Okay, then uh, again, if you want to see uh, an other analysis, uh, you need to go again, the same pattern. Then proportion, you can also see the proportion among your variable. If I want to see the proportion of, uh, say, um, okay, sex, because it's a dummy variable, male, female. Yes, you can see the proportion of your whole sample size. So 40% is male and 52% is female in your sample size. So you can just play with the data and 
uh, do a descriptive type of analysis with your uh, with your data okay and you can also uh, use uh, sorry here you can also use different uh, like table analysis one way table two way table so if i will use the one way table then again you can choose any your uh, variable say race so it's a white black and other so it's a proportion of each race so you can just evalu evaluate your survey uh, analysis or you can evaluate your sample size okay uh, this is a very basic descriptive uh, type of analysis okay then uh, you can also use a, a main modeling like linear model or binary outcomes if your uh, dependent variable is continuous variable definitely then you will go for the linear modeling if your dependent variable is a dichotomous variable like one zero dummy variable then definitely you will go a logistic regression model so i will go one by one uh, for linear regression you will go just linear regression simply you will click here then this window will be pop up this window is demanding your dependent variable so if i choose dependent variable like uh, uh, blood pressure okay blood pressure is my dependent so it dependent i will choose that which factor that cause the blood pressure number one may be uh, age second independent variable may be uh, like weight right okay for example we are taking two variable so actually we are investigating that uh, what age or weight are uh, you know affecting your blood pressure or not so we are taking two independent variable here and one dependent variable is here so you just need to click okay so you can see it's a simple linear regression model so here you can see that the age and weight are significantly affecting your blood pressure and all these two variable are positively related to your blood pressure so there is a positive coefficient is there so there is a mean there is a positive significant relationship between age and blood pressure and weight and blood pressure so these two variable are positively significant and uh, giving a significant impact on blood pressure so because significant is the p value is 0.05 uh, is less than 0.05 so it has the level of significant and your model is overall a goodness of it because probability value of f is again less than 0 0.05 so it's a basic you know it's a basic uh, uh, understanding of linear regression model okay uh, then uh, if you will go uh, for the logistic uh, logistic uh, analysis then again you will go in the survey survey data analysis then binary outcomes and logistic regression reporting odds or ratio it's depend uh, if you will want to get information regarding odds ratio again you can just take uh, this uh, this technique otherwise the reporting coefficient are the same techniques but uh, you know sorry a different technique but giving the same information to you so it's depend on you that either you are using odds ratio or coefficient ratio but one thing is clear that while you are using logistic regression be sure that your your you know your dependent variable must be a dichotomous variable so uh, for dependent variable i will choose uh, for instance uh, mm, diabetes right either the people are diabetes or non diabetic patient right so there like for example one is a dummy variable for diabetes and zero is for non diabetes so i will click diabetes here as a dependent and again we will choose the same independent variable age and uh, weight uh, age and weight here so i will choose two independent and one dependent 
So actually we are investigating here that either age and weight are affecting for diabetes patient or not, right? So we are clicking here in logistic regression. So this window has been pop up. So here again, the probability value is less than five. So mean age and weight again are significantly affecting diabetes patient, right? And odd ratio 1.0 mean if the odd ratio is greater than one, there is a positive relationship. If the ratio like less than one, if it would be, a, for example, only 0 0.06 mean there is a negative relationship between independent and dependent variable. So this is a simple, uh, simple interpretation of logistic regression. So this, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, have done only two analysis here. You can just play with your data in survey analysis. There are uh, lots of techniques, lots of model available in your uh, window column. So it depends on which type of, you know, which type of question you are going to answer. It, it depends. It's a, a long discussion. I will request to the Connecting Asia if they will arrange an other workshop, then I will, uh, I can, you know, cover the topic in detail. Okay, uh, this is the first part. Uh, in five minutes, I will tell you that how we can import our data from Excel, and then we can giving weight and finite population correction by manually. I will clear the data. You can see the clear command, clear the data. So already data has been uh, cleared. So I am going to import data from our computer. So definitely your file is saved in your computer in somewhere else. So I will go in file here. Then I will go import Excel, okay, Excel. Then my data is asking the exact location of my data. Mm. So this is my hypothetical data. I will just select the worksheet data, Excel, and just open, right? So this sheet is open here. So I will just click on import first row as a variable name. I will click on it and finally click on OK. So Stata will pick the first uh, cell of row taking as a variable name. So I can show here data editor. So this is my data. Again, this is a hypothetical data respondent. I have 50 respondent, okay. The ages, gender, one for male, zero for female, one for male. Again, it's a dummy variable. Heights, weights, and blood pressure level, okay. If you have, you know, uh, collected this data through questionnaire, through interview, again, it depends uh, which type of tool you have used for collection with this data. I suppose that this 50 respondent, uh, this is your sample size and uh, you, uh, your population Sorry, size is 1000. Sorry to disturb you, Dr. Gilani. Uh, I think we need to give the give them the next session. Actually, we decided for the next session. So actually, okay. Okay, no man. okay, no man. Uh, doc, uh, sorry, uh, give me uh, two minutes only. Okay. Two minutes only. Okay, okay. Uh, this is, you know, a 50 sample size. I, I'm supposed that I'm taking this 50 sample from 1000 population, right? So, uh, what I will do next, I will generate, uh, I will give a weight to the individual. So, for this, I will Right, gen command, gen, weight. Gen weight response is equal. For example, uh, I have 1000 respondent, uh, oh, sorry, population, and I have choose 50 as a sample. So if you remember, I write a uh, formula in my slides, the number of population divided by number of sample. So I just enter. 
so this command will generate a appropriate way to the individual respondent then second step is i will uh, generate an other variable that is finite population correction finite population correction generate is equal to again this formula is reciprocal of your weight what i will do i will do is 50 divided by 1000 that is our population if you recall that formula then i will enter so th they have you know given a specific value to the uh, finite population correction so uh, after this i will go again in stat uh, statistics i will declare data as a sample uh, sorry uh, data as a survey uh, data so i will go declare as a survey data so this window will be appear so this is very important point here so you have to tell the data what is your primary sample unit definitely my primary sample unit is respondent right 1 to 50 okay strata i have uh, two groups for example i am i am investigating between male and female like uh, chances of covid in male or female for instance or uh, blood pressure between male and female so i will i have to tell strata that is what is my strata that is your gender okay finite population correction i will assign this fpc if you remember i will uh, name this variable in command i will choose fpc then i will go in the weights in weights i have to assign that is weight rec if you remember i give the name weight rec i assign this weight to the my sample then okay then you know this set i have assigned uh you know as a survey design to my data then again you can do uh, analysis as i discussed earlier that you can go for descriptive analysis you can go from the linear regression you can go you can go for the logistic regression it's depend on you so uh, uh, this is from my side uh, in this specific period of time i can explain uh, in this way i have tried my level best so if you have any question you can ask yeah over to you, Dr. Uh, Zena, please. Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. We are just going to um, round up. Um, there were some questions that were asked. Maybe you can just brief briefly explain the questions to us. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, sure. The question says that which sampling technique is better for prob probability sampling and non-probability sampling? okay uh, okay it's a very a good question it's a very common question uh, let's see uh, because uh, there are basically two techniques but i suggest that uh, you should go for the probability That's sampling because question. it has uh, you know it okay. has uh, uh, accurate information and more uh, information and more prediction about your population size but people are uh, also use the non probability sampling like convenience sampling convenient sampling so it's again it has advantage it's a low cost it has a easy to do just say thank you thank you all the one is waiting thank you yeah so uh, um, for my point of view the probability sampling is a good sampling for your survey analysis yes dr zen okay um thank you very much doctor so we're going to allow the other section to hold now. Um, if you still have questions, you can send a um, would um, reply on the chat, but we have to move to the next um, workshop now. So thank you very much for participating. Um, Dr. Gelani, we are so grateful for the knowledge sharing. Um, for all the participants, there's a next section you can join if you want to. And um, if you still have questions on this, you can send to us or in the chat section if you send to us in our emails we can still reply yeah, sure. you will pass it through sure, across sure. to you sure. so thank you I'm very available. much for um for hosting dr gilani we are very grateful and from me dr zainab all the way from utm thank you Johor very much Baru, Malaysia. thank you very much and thanks to all participants Bye.